Well, I'm finally going to get to harvest my first Oka melon. This is not the one that I'm going to harvest, but I wanted to show it. It's my largest. Uh, I don't know. I don't like to say there isn't a tendril, because I found a tendril on the one before that I claimed there wasn't one, so there's probably one there somewhere, but it's greener than the one that I'm going to harvest anyway. Uh, I am tracking an actual rainstorm that's headed this way two radar systems, one in the U.S. and one in Canada that you can access on the internet. And they both show that the rain is not very far away from us right now, which is wonderful. All summer we're finally going to get a rainstorm in you know, mid to late September here, but let's pick a oka melon and see what it's like. This is the one that I'm going to harvest. It has, still has green stripes, um, but the tendril next to it completely dried up several days ago. Uh, yesterday or the day before I come out and there was an ant walking over it, so I thought, okay, if it's starting to smell ripe enough that the ants are thinking about having it, I think I will take it in the house and see what it's like. Well, I guess that's cantaloupe size, right? About the size of a good sized cantaloupe that you'd buy. Altogether, six or seven there that are going to, I think, will ripen and numerous other small ones that I suspect just won't make it. Our days are getting shorter and nights are getting colder. Let's go see what's inside this thing. I'm sure you can hear Angel's toenails in the background. <laughs> Angel is never far away. Hardly ever lets me out of my, her sight. Outside. I'm not sure now if that is ripe and ready to pick or not, but went on the tendril thing, I guess. The tendril is definitely dried up and gone here. See if I can scoop out the seeds. Well, there are seeds, but it's not as, not as seedy as I have seen in some other melons. If I like it, I'm going to save the seeds, because it is an open pollinated heirloom variety, and I don't believe there was anything else in the hoopoe that it could have cross-pollinated with. The closest relative of it in the hoopoes would have been zucchini, and they were quite a diff distance away, so I suspect they just pollinated themselves. Well, what do I do? Here? Cut a little wedge off of it, I guess. One thing I'm pleased, they're not all ripening on the same day. Whatever it was I grew once before for melons, I've only done it a few times. It seemed to me like they all ripened at once. I think that could have been left a while longer. But it has a nice flavor, but different. I thought... I thought it would be more like cantaloupe. It sort of tastes more like watermelon, even though it's yellow. Mm. Very interesting. But I think with the amount of green that's still there, the next one I harvest, I will leave it much longer, I guess. Maybe until the, these green stripes have all turned a, a beigey brown color on the outside, but it will be eaten. It's quite nice, but a surprise to me, it tastes more like watermelon than, than cantaloupe. I'm out to harvest my grape crop. One vine, and as I've said many times before, it's called beta, which is a slipskin type grape, um, similar to Concord, but much smaller. At least mine are always much smaller. It gives you an idea of what they're like. Small clusters and smaller grapes, but uh, very sweet. Taste to me a lot like a, a Concord grape and have that same sort of skin that slips off of the, off of the meaty part. Well, I'm going to continue harvesting here and I'll show you what I get when I finish. Not, not a large crop. I think I've had lots more off this vine in the past, but it's been totally ignored this year. Um, this past spring I gave it its usual spring pruning and that's the last time I did anything with it. It was never 
never pruned beyond that or anything, and certainly never watered or anything. We've had such a shortage of water. Grapes were not a priority, I guess. Don't have much use for them this year. I made uh, jam last year and have lots of that still left to use. So these will be eaten as a table grape and I suspect shared around the neighborhood. So I'll show you what I get when I finish. I'm sure I've had larger harvests. For several weeks I've been tasting them periodically and they've always been a bit too sour. And now I think probably for close to two weeks I just forgot about them and they're overripe. Uh, you can see some here have, I don't know, burst open or whatever, but there were also were whole clusters that were covered with a, I guess a mold of some sort of brown dusty stuff anyway that I completely discarded the whole clusters, but I don't have any need for a lot of them anyway and that's a reasonable harvest and now they are certainly nice and sweet. I've been meaning to say that uh, the uh, oka melon, I, I, uh, this is two days after I harvested the oka melon, I've managed to eat it all, it was quite tasty. Um, after it had been chilled in the refrigerator, I could see where it had more of a cantaloupe type flavor to it, but it was even crispy. <laughs> it was not ripe, I think is what I'm trying to say, even though that tendril had dried up and died. Um, it could have well, stood to be on the vine for another week or so, and I think the flavor would have been much better. So when I harvest the next one, I'm going to wait and be a bit more patient. And when it's completely brown on the outside or that beige color that uh, cantaloupe melons go, I'll harvest that one and see if the flavor is any better. So far, I haven't saved the seed because what I had out of that one, I wouldn't care to grow it again. But I suspect it's because it wasn't ripe. This will be my last potato reveal of the season. I only grew five containers. I think with the luck I had in the growing them in the ground with the, you know, what I was calling moles, and several people have corrected me and said that moles don't eat vegetables, it would be voles. Well, I don't care what you call them, I guess. <laughs> Miserable creatures, there they are. They destroyed a lot of my potatoes. So I think next year there will be more potatoes grown in containers and probably none grown in the ground unless a few volunteers come up. Now this is going to be a bit damp because we have had some rain. Not a lot of rain but for over 24 hours we had a steady very light rain. I really don't know exactly how much but I would say between 5 and 10 millimeters. Milli, milli, yeah millimeters. <laughs> I always get my millimeters and my milliliters mixed up but I guess that would be millimeters and uh, it, the ground is still quite dry, uh, if you dig down any at all, but it did water the garden nicely, so hopefully that's the beginning of the fall rains and we'll have more to come. It's interesting to see if this one's also got ants, the ones all around it did. Yes it does. Ants and a centipede. I don't know if centipedes eat my potatoes or not, but we'll find out. I don't think I said, did I, this is Kara and uh, Charlotte. Uh, two Cara potatoes, uh, ones that I overwinter, saved over winter and planted from last year's crop. That's a Cara there. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the Charlottes that uh, Brendan sent me. It'll be easy enough to tell which is which. The Caras have a lovely pink eye on them. And these are excellent. This container has been ready to harvest for quite some time. I just didn't need them. I still don't need them, but I want to uh, get them out and get them in the house, I guess. I don't suppose they would root and start to grow again this time of year, but I just don't like the idea of leaving them in the ground. They don't have to be there. They're not growing. The plant itself has died back. Not finding any Charlottes yet. There's one coming into the Charlottes now, I guess. I've got to remember to save both Charlotte and uh, Kara out of this batch for next year's garden. I like both potatoes very much. Just cooked some Caras yesterday. Steam cooked them again. I like that method. Works very well. The 
it still isn't all that wet. I thought it would be much wetter than it is. Make sure I get everything before I move on if possible. Actually, it's barely damp. As I said, we didn't get a lot of rain. It rained steadily for practically 24 hours, but it was a very, very light rain. Carrots are a lovely size, because Charlotte is not supposed to be a big potato anyway, I guess, from what I've been told. Never grown them before, but these are a good size for the carrot, at least for me. I don't usually get them that large. that. And as I always do, I will uh, weigh the total crop and uh, put the weight on the screen here. Once I get them up to the host, but that's a good yield. And these carrots are a lovely size. I picked up some of the smaller ones, I think, to save for seed potatoes. I'm going to want those. Not that many of the Charlotte, but there was only one Charlotte seed potato in there. I've got to save, probably have to save most of those for, for next year, I guess. I still have some Charlotte in the house that I haven't finished eating yet. So next, I want to pick my squash. The vines aren't dying back, or well, they are dying back. They haven't been hit by frost, I mean, they're not dead. The vines are still growing, but I think the squash that are on them now have completely matured, and I want to pick them and harden them off in the sunshine. So I'll show you what I get from my squash crop here. Well, I think that is all of my squash, at least I hope it is. <laughs> Sometimes when the vines die back from a heavy frost, you do find more hidden that you couldn't find originally. But that's a lot more squash than I'll be able to eat. I'll go through the varieties for you. This is Waltham Butternut, an heirloom butternut squash, an excellent storing squash. It will store for months and months, so that will be the one that I eat last. These are Hokkaido Pumpkin or Red Curry Squash. This is one also, and it will turn that orange as it as it hardens off and ripens more. Um, I didn't want to leave anything in the garden because we're now getting this damper weather, which I'm not complaining about. <laughs> I really want the damper weather, but that brings out slugs, and uh, didn't want to see these damaged. There are more of those hidden down in there. There's six or seven, probably. These are North Georgia Candy Roaster Squash. Enormous things. Um, it's said on the seed packet that they can go up to 10 pounds. Well, I would say I've got several there that are 10 pounds or more. They're a very heavy squash. So much for me to try to do something with after I cook one. I roasted one. Very good. Uh, then I read something online that said after a couple of months of storage, the flavor improves even more. So I will store these in the house once I get them hardened off for a couple of months before I cook the next one. Um, the only thing I can think of is once I roast one, I will have to take half or more of it and uh, freeze it after it's been cooked to use later because I, I just can't <laughs> consume that much all at once. And they're a lovely squash. I guess I already said that they have a nice flavor um, and very prolific. There was four plants for each of these varieties and that is, oh, I don't know how many are there, eight or nine, I guess, of the Georgia candy roasters and, and less of the other two. Uh, there is one more variety, Kakuts. I'll show you a couple of examples. This is a small one. And I'm showing it to you. It's, it's still, it's larger than I think the ones that you should pick to eat. And I uh, have eaten some of the smaller ones, and I have a few more that are still developing. But I wanted to show you this damage. That has teeth marks in it, which I don't know if you can pick up or not. That's a rodent of some sort. Mouse, vole, or some kind of a critter. Like Sicilian squashes as well. But I've got to show you my larger one. Which I have two of these. This is the larger of the two. But I'll set it down in here. <laughs> 
amazing. And that grew so fast. Uh, from the time it got pollinated, probably two or three weeks, and it was that size. You can just seem to watch the thing grow every day. Well, the hens will enjoy it. Any large summer squash, or, or these are also a summer squash, I, that I don't like, I like the smaller ones. I split them in half lengthwise and give them to the hens and they think it's a great treat. And they're over there hollering for one now, I guess. Well, that will conclude this week's video and thank you very much for watching.